The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only. Good morning, mode. everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Aronow. I'm the product specialist for the Cisco Meraki MX Security Appliance. Uh, and I've got some exciting updates for you today, so thanks for joining us. Uh, I've also got uh, Emily from our technical marketing team and Dahan, the product manager for MX, here with me in the room. So they'll be uh, answering questions throughout the session. Feel free to use the Q&A to ask any questions you may have. Please keep your questions to the Q&A when possible rather than the chat window uh, because we won't really be monitoring the chat window heavily. And then we should also have some time at the end uh, to do some verbal Q&A so that we can get broader responses that everyone can hear for some of the key questions. So uh, here's what we're doing today. We're going to talk about an update to the security portfolio uh, in terms of what we're kind of doing in the security space. We're going to talk about some new hardware and software developments at Cisco Meraki under the MX line. And then I'm going to try to leave lots of time for Q&A because we usually get some pretty great questions. Uh, and even though some of them will have already been answered in the Q&A window, I like to make sure that everyone gets to hear some of the key answers, as I said. So most of you are hopefully familiar with Cisco Meraki, at least to some degree. But a quick kind of review for some of you uh, of who we are and what we do, as it says here on the slide. Cisco Meraki is a cloud-managed networking vendor. So we are branch of Cisco, and we offer cloud-managed network devices. And what we mean by cloud-managed network devices are devices that perform standard networking functions, uh, security appliances, switches, access points, software, MDM client. But these products are managed via a cloud dashboard rather than through a command line or through a local a GUI interface or anything like that. So that's really the key differentiator is that we have this centralized web dashboard that manages all of these devices in one place. And you'll see when you start, those of you who aren't familiar with dashboard, once you start getting in there and potentially getting trials or playing with the systems manager product, you'll see how easy and how intuitive that interface is. And that's a key part of the value proposition. So the, the GUI and kind of the management experience is a big part of what Meraki brings to the table. So with that said, um, what's going on with the MX business? Well, we're seeing phenomenal growth. Meraki as a whole is seeing phenomenal growth. And a lot of this, of course, is due to uh, the Cisco sales and distribution channels that we have access to as part of Cisco, which has been a wonderful thing. And a lot of it, I think, is due to the value proposition really resonating with people, resonating with IT professionals and networking professionals. Um, as a former network administrator, I kind of come from a background of trying to manage a lot of distributed sites with a very, very small team, right? Small, dedicated team, which is a very common scenario in today's networking world. So I think that the Meraki portfolio and the MX specifically really speak to that need. And that's one of the reasons that we're growing so fast and people are responding so well. So a few key points here. One of the greatest values of any Meraki platform is that they're incredibly easy to deploy and incredibly easy to manage, right? That's kind of the, the whole shtick in a nutshell. So deployment is incredibly simple because everything's managed from one place. You don't need to do central pre-staging because everything's managed in the web dashboard. So all that needs to be done on site is for someone to plug the device in, get it connected to the internet, right? That's really all you need to do from an on-site setup perspective. The remainder of it can all be done from dashboard. Everything can be configured or even pre-configured before the device hits the store, hits the location, hits the school um, from the management dashboard. The security feature set, obviously, is a, is a key piece of this. We are a security product. So the fact that we have SourceFire IPS running on the box, we have built-in malware protection offered uh, with a Kaspersky engine, we have Layer 3 and Layer 7 firewalling, we have Geo IP firewalling, we have all these security features built in and security reporting built in in order to really make the security admins job easier as well as the network admins and network ops teams. And this, of course, is becoming more and more of a concern with a lot of the Kind of high uh, high visibility breaches we've seen lately. We saw Target not that long ago. We're seeing more and more of these really kind of heinous breaches in the last, I would say, six months or so. It's been very, very obvious. Um, so more and more of the security teams are really coming to the table with, well, we, we need the best in class security because there are threats out there and we need to address them, right? Um, obviously, cost is always a factor. And one of the key, and we're going to talk about this actually in the context of some of the stuff we've been doing lately and some of the future features that we're bringing in the next few months, but reducing total cost of ownership is something that Meraki has always kind of prided ourselves on. And the MX is no exception. So the, the licensing st structure is very simple and tends to keep uh, ownership costs down. And of course, the cost of management, cost in time, cost in man hours is reduced by the simplicity and ease of use of the interface. And we'll also talk about some features that we're rolling out. Uh, that are going to help even 
more reduce that total cost of ownership. For those of you who aren't familiar with the MX at all, um, one of our key features is a feature called AutoVPN, and I think that's probably the best example of how Meraki, or the MX in particular, reduces the amount of management overhead. If you're not familiar with AutoVPN, I highly recommend that you look at one of the previously recorded webinars for Intro to MX. We cover it pretty extensively. Or, of course, reach out to your account team and ask them to tell you about it, and they'll be happy to, to tell you about it. I don't want to get into it too deeply in this session because we've got a lot of stuff to cover. So the final piece I want to talk about here is when I say unified management console, unified management dashboard, I don't just mean centralized for all of, say, the MXs that you own. It's centralized for all of your Meraki devices. So you have one GUI that covers not only your security, but your switching, your wireless, your MDM. So it really is kind of a one-stop shop, single pane of glass, right, to use the, the industry term, uh, interface for all of your network operations. And that's a really valuable thing when you get into not having to learn all these different interfaces, not having to know all these different technologies, and having all your data about your network in one place. In terms of feature development, um, I've always been very proud of the feature velocity that we accomplish here. We, we try to really bring new features uh, to our customers as rapidly and efficiently as possible. And one of the reasons we can do that is that we're not just producing firmware features, right? We're not just producing changes to the code running on the box, although, of course, that is part of it. But we're also producing new dashboard features. So things like you can see sort of toward the middle there, configuration templates. That's a feature that is not based on the code running on the box, it's a feature of the Meraki dashboard. And it's a huge advancement in centralized management of MX devices. And several of the other ones here as well are also, you know, kind of UI dashboard features. And we can deliver these natively. Customers just wake up one morning, they have this new feature. It's not like they need to download new firmware. It's not like they need to call into support, anything. And even that, even the firmware role process, we make very, very simple for those features. So. Let's talk about the key kind of feature update uh, for today's session, which is iWAN. iWAN, or Intelligent WAN, is a uh, kind of Cisco technology offering. And the idea is it allows your network to be smarter, your network devices to be smarter about how traffic should be passing over the network, what the best paths are, what kind of performance you're seeing, and make intelligent decisions about the traffic in your network and how to treat it. And the idea is the devices should be smart enough to do this without you having to always go in and tell them. So things like route changes, right? Things like uh, VPN reestablishment. Your devices should know what to do when network conditions change, and you shouldn't have to go in and make manual changes every time something in the network changes. So there's four kind of pillars of iWAN. The first one, uh, which is, in my mind, I would say that the first and third are probably the most key in terms of what's new and different with iWAN. Uh, on the far left, you'll see transport independence. What we mean by that is it doesn't matter physically what medium you're sending the traffic over. To the iWAN architecture, it's just a path. And that can be VPN over cellular. It can be VPN over you know, a landline. It can be MPLS. It can be really any traffic path you want. And the idea is it's just another tool in the tool belt. It's just another weapon in iWAN's arsenal. So when you have an iWAN deployment, a true iWAN deployment, what type of path you're taking doesn't really matter. It's just another path that's available. We can calculate metrics for it. How you know lossy is it? How much latency is there? And we can take the actions necessary to make sure your traffic gets where it needs to go. And the path that it takes to get there is almost irrelevant. The second piece is application optimization. And what I, what I mean by applica application optimization is, one, the ability to control and prioritize traffic within your networks. And that's something that uh, the Cisco Meraki products, the MX in particular, have done pretty well historically, and we're going to continue to improve on. And you'll see, if those of you familiar with Dashboard will know that there is a application visibility and control engine built in to the dashboard, and there are traffic shaping features and other bandwidth management features that allow you to do things like bandwidth limit certain types of traffic at layer seven or prioritize certain types of traffic or apply DSCP tags, right? Things like this. And that's where you really get into that application optimization, making sure that important traffic gets where it needs to go more quickly and efficiently than unimportant traffic. You know, if you have users using YouTube, you don't want that to impact your SIP traffic or your other VoIP traffic. That's a, a key example of that use case. Intelligent path control kind of goes back to what I was saying about the core IWAN value proposition, which is that the network should determine what the best path is to get to wherever a, p a bit of traffic is trying to go. So that's where you get into things like performance-based routing, policy-based routing, 
uh, really any kind of intelligent routing decisions. And that's where some of the feature development on MX is coming, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The final piece, which of course is also key, is security. So it's almost, I would say it's just as important to know that your traffic is getting from A to B securely as it is to know that it's getting from A to B at all. Because especially in retail, or in some cases education, uh, certainly healthcare environments, there's always data that has to be secure for both compliance and just sanity reasons, right? So that's where the security comes into play. And that's where our auto VPN solution that I mentioned earlier really kind of facilitates secure IWAN because we can create these auto VPN tunnels easily, dynamically, quickly, and very simply over really any path that we need to create them over. And we can send traffic over them in order to make sure that all the traffic that goes from site to site is secure. So we've talked about the technology value of IWAN. Let's talk a little bit about what it does for you kind of on a business and, and cost savings side. Well, one of the big things is I think the transition, and this is sort of an industry trend that I've seen over the last several years, the transition away from MPLS as broadband and business links become to some extent more reliable. And really it's driven by, of course, the cost of MPLS. The cost is much higher. So the idea is if you have redundant, flexible VPN, you don't necessarily need MPLS or you have a, a reduced need for MPLS. And that's, I think, a goal for a lot of IT companies or a lot of uh, network professionals is to reduce the reliance on MPLS, even if it's still there, so that you can potentially get rid of it down the road or just reduce your kind of cost associated with it. The other key thing is that there are so many high bandwidth applications out there now that are used by everyone, right? We, I mentioned YouTube, uh, but there's a, a slew of them out there. So being able to really control both the path and the prioritization of traffic is very important in terms of making sure that business critical applications are delivered no matter what else is going on in the network. The final piece is, as I said, the goal is for an IWAN network to be smart, right? For it to make those decisions so that you really don't have to on a case-by-case -case basis. That's a drastic reduction in the amount of management overhead and the complexity of managing the network because you tell it, okay, I want you to send traffic over the best path by these metrics that I've defined, and then it just kind of takes it from there. And that's one of the reasons I think that Meraki fits very well into this IWAN technology suite because that's been our goal from the get-go, right, is to reduce the management complexity, make the network smarter, and allow you to kind of take some of the onus of those day-to-day decisions off of the network team and have them be automated. And that's really where the MX fits in very well in the IWAN story. So I've been talking about IWAN, what it is, what it gives you. Let's get to the part where we deliver it. So this is the uh, kind of phase one IWAN feature set for the MX. There's three key pieces here. The first is dual active pathing. So this represents either dual active VPN over broadband or dual active VPN over MPLS. So you're looking at you know, secure connectivity uh, between sites over multiple paths, which is obviously a key part of this whole concept. And you have automatic decision making, which we'll get to in a second, as to which path is used. But the first part is just having that dual active path. So currently, the way it stands today, you have one VPN tunnel between any two MX, Meraki MX sites. right? Now you'll be able to have multiple tunnels because you'll be using both uplinks in a dual uplink scenario to establish those tunnels and you'll be able to send traffic over both of them at once. The second piece is performance-based routing. So determining the proper path to use for traffic based on latency, loss, uh, we're considering jitter as well, right? We're looking at the metrics that we can use to determine what is the best path for the traffic from a performance perspective, which can be really important for voice traffic and other mission critical applications. The final piece, which I think is kind of a logical evolution of stuff that we've been doing on the MX for a while now, is policy-based routing. And that's, rather than performance-based, more of just a, we want to we set the kind of presumed best route for our traffic. So we're going to say, based on these classifications, I want traffic to go out my MPLS. I want traffic to go out over the broadband VPN. I want traffic to go out in this particular fashion, right, out into the, onto the internet, potentially based on classifications that I've set in the dashboard. And I think between these features, it's going to drastically improve the flexibility of an MX network. And, and that's a very valuable thing for a lot of our customers. So probably my favorite example of sort of a prototypical IWAN type network uh, that 
our customers are running today as this network we have here on the screen. So this particular customer is looking to save almost a million dollars, right? They're, they're, that's incredibly significant cost savings. And you can see the breakdown on the right here, but first a quick kind of overview of what they're doing. They have 50 sites that they're implementing this BYOD platform and guest platform at. They want to reduce the complexity, they want to make it easy to manage, they want to reduce the cost of the actual underlying infrastructure, they want to keep everything very easy and as much as possible, you know, low cost. And they also want, in order to keep it low cost, to phase off of and kind of get away from the MPLS use case, as I kind of described before. So the way they did this is they implemented a full Meraki stack, uh, security switching wireless, and they've reduced the total cost of ownership and the, the general spend drastically by doing this. And you can see, as I said, the breakdown on the right here. So their projected cost for the initial deployment, non-Meraki deployment, would have been about $2 million over a three-year period. The Meraki costs total come out to under 700000 So it's it's actually a incredible cost savings. And I won't get into the breakdown. You guys can see this and, and kind of take a look at it for yourselves. And there's a recording of this webinar that you'll be able to view and kind of go through this. Um, but it's just, it's really astonishing what customers can do by leveraging these platforms. And keep in mind, this is without the new iWAN features. This is an existing deployment. So imagine how much extra leverage we get from some of these new flexible routing features, dual VPN features, right? So we've been talking a lot about the MX. Uh, we don't wanna leave anybody out. We don't pretend that we're the only iWAN shop in town. So there are really two Cisco iWAN offerings. As with all of the kind of Cisco Meraki uh, platform offerings since we were acquired by Cisco, there's two offerings here, right? There's the Cisco on-premise offering and the Cisco cloud offering. And they're both valuable um, depending on the customer use case. One may be more useful than the other, but it really depends on the customer, depends on the network, right? So on the left, you have the on-premise option, which is based on the Cisco ISR. It uses DMVPN for secure connectivity between sites uses dynamic routing, layer two through layer seven services, has IPv6 capabilities, uh, very modular, very flexible, and has uh, a lot of third-party integration options as you know, as the Cisco enterprise products tend to do. They've got a lot of great third-party integration possibilities. And the goal here, of course, is lower the cost of ownership. That's part of the IOM message. And improve the flexibility, give you really that kind of every knob and dial. On the right, we have the MX IWAN solution, which is what I've been talking about. Uh, which is designed around the UTM use case, right? The MX is Cisco's first UTM product. Um, specific to an Ethernet or 4G drop-off, we don't have the kind of uh, WAN, physical WAN flexibility, things like ADSL termination, right? Things like that require conversion. Um, using AutoVPN, which in my mind is the best VPN implementation I've ever seen. I mean, it's really phenomenal for such set VPN automatic low end load balancing, these new features that we talked about, PBR, PFR, dual active VPN, and then of course the cloud management, which at the end of the day is a huge part of the value proposition for any Meraki product. And the goal here is, again, lower total cost of ownership and also make things very, very simple and very easy and intuitive for the network ops team, the security administration team, all of the network teams involved in managing and monitoring the network. So, Let's move over from the software side to the hardware side for a moment. I've got an exciting announcement here. Some of you may have heard about it already. It's been kind of out in the water supply. But we've got a new product uh, that's actually available now. Uh, it's the MX64. There's actually two hardware products here. It's 64 and 64W. This follows the same kind of model as our 60 and 60W, which this replaces. And it's the first 802.11ac UTM appliance on the market. Um, I actually, to kind of take myself out of my professional role and into a personal one for a second, I run one at home. It's phenomenal. I'm a huge fan. So why why the MX64, 64W? Why replace the 60 and 60W, which have done very well. They've been almost a, a flagship product for us. Uh, the reason is, as you can see on the right here, the internet is getting faster, right? Everyone needs higher bandwidth devices because they have higher bandwidth pipes, they have higher bandwidth usage, they have higher bandwidth applications running in their networks. Um, ISPs are kind of doing the slow crawl, right, of going through and upgrading network speeds. Uh, it takes some time, but we're seeing already some significant movement in that direction. And we wanted to offer a new product that really addresses that need and gives higher bandwidth and, and higher performance uh, for the small office use case. 
Now, the other thing is we want to offer the security side of this as well, because as we talked about, there are more and more threats out there, and they're not just threats for the data center or for the headquarters, they're threats for the branch. And the MX64 and 64W is targeted at the branch. So you get someone compromising a point of sale terminal in the branch and piggybacking off that, to use a retail example, into you know the, the larger point of sale system across all the stores, that's a huge vulnerability, and that's happened. And you know some of the vulnerabilities we've heard being exploited recently have involved exactly that. So we want to offer this UTM advanced feature set in a way that really we aren't hardware platform dependent. We want to make sure that the hardware is robust enough and has the power to really run these security features in a very powerful way. And that's exactly what we're delivering with the 64 and 64W. A few bits of information about it. It's uh, approximately two to three times faster than the 60 and 60W were. It's a significant speed improvement. I've seen it myself. Uh, it's, as I said, the first 802.11 AC UTM on the market, and as most of you probably know, 802.11 AC is about three times the speed of 11N, and it, it does deliver great wireless performance. Uh, as I said, I've been using one myself, and I've had nothing but good experiences. And of course, on the security side, we have our existing security portfolio delivered through this box, the same as our other platforms, which is intrusion prevention, source fire intrusion prevention. Uh, content filtering, anti-malware, anti-phishing, all with automatic signature updates delivered from the cloud, which is really a, a very valuable thing. You never have to worry about whether your signatures are up to date because they're updated automatically. And actually, there's a relatively new feature that allows you to control the frequency of those updates so you can even manage the bandwidth usage of that over something like a cellular link. So really flexible, but still reliable. The other thing is that the cloud infrastructure is fully PCI 3.0 certified. So you don't have to worry in retail or any other PCI environment about running into PCI concerns because the device is cloud managed. We've got you covered from that side and we can provide the PCI rock that you can provide to your auditor to say, yes, the back end is fully compliant. You can see the pricing there, uh, US pricing on the right. So who's the, who's the customer, right? Who's the goal customer here? Well, the goal customer for the 64 and 64W is of course a branch deployment generally, because it is a branch box. It's, it's not something like the MX100 or the MX400 or 600 that are kind of those uh, more headquarters or larger office-based boxes. But the goal is to address this, this branch use case. Uh, in some cases, this may be retail if it's very well as a retail box, but it's not exclusively a retail box by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, fully PCI level one, as I said, PCI DSS 3.0 certified backend, security for the branch, full UTM security antivirus, intrusion prevention, uh, content filtering, GeoIP firewalling, all of those layer seven firewall features as well, all built into this branch device. And the same retail analytics, the CMX location analytics that we offer on our MR access points are also available on the 64W because it is a wireless capable unit. So you can get some of those uh, location, some of that location analytics data and use it to drive marketing campaigns, drive advertising, or just get a feel for what foot traffic and customer traffic looks like in your site. We offer built-in splash capabilities, again, similar to the MR line, where we can customize the user experience for users who are connecting to your guest network. Do things like present them with a splash page with your terms and conditions, present them with a Facebook login where they have to check into your Facebook page in order to get onto the guest network. And you can track that using Facebook's built-in login analytics as well on their backend. And then of course, going back to something we talked about at the very beginning, the incredibly easy deployment, maintenance, and management and monitoring of the Meraki platform. So the ability to really roll out to a huge branch deployment with very little work required in terms of the actual setup. Send the device, ship it directly to the branch, someone on site plugs it in, and then Network admins, security admins, whoever it is back at headquarters can configure all of this via the web dashboard without ever having to go on site. So we've got some just updates in terms of uh, product sizing here. Uh, one thing I want to mention, and actually it may be mentioned on the subsequent slide, but I'm going to mention it here. We have an updated sizing guide. For those of you who aren't familiar with the sizing guide, uh, we have a, a basically data sheet type document called the MX sizing guide. You can find it online, you can Google it. It's in our documentation library on the Meraki website. Um, and it provides detailed sizing information for various customer scenarios, real world scenarios with real world traffic testing, as well as just general data sheet style 
numbers for basic connectivity information, connections per second, total connections, throughput, things like that. This is a very basic summary of that data. More detailed data is in the sizing guide. This gives you some idea of where the lineup sits. So the 64 and 64W for the small branch up to about 50 client devices on through the 600 up to about 10,000 client devices. And then the Z1 over in the corner there are our little teleworker unit. Um, but I do want to note that the 64 and 64W you can see are both in terms of number of users supported and in terms of throughput a significant step forward from MX60 and 60W. So what's next? Well, I highly recommend if you have not played with any of the Meraki gear before, I highly recommend you do a free trial or evaluation. So you can see there, meraki.cisco.com slash eval will allow you to do uh, an evaluation trial. We do trials for all of our gear, no cost. We ship it to you. We ship it back. We have a dedicated support team that specifically works with free trial customers, and they will work with you to really you know, show you the power of the dashboard, show you what you can do with it, help you with any issues you run into. We really follow the model of try it, you'll like it. It's, it's one of those things where the management experience is such a key piece of the value proposition that it's really hard not to fall in love with the Meraki dashboard once you use it because it's such a, a pivot, it's such a shift and so, so much simpler solution from a lot of the existing portfolios out there. Um, I highly recommend that you take a look at our blog. We've got a lot of great information. We include feature updates, general information, things that we're working on. There's a lot of great information there. Uh, Emily, who as I mentioned is here in the room with me, writes a lot of the MX blog posts uh, and they, there's a lot of great information there. It'll also keep you up to date on some of the new stuff we're releasing, right? So you're not falling behind, you know about new features as we release them. And then of course, for any questions, for anything else that you need to know, Feel free to contact your Cisco Meraki rep. If you don't know who that is, meraki.cisco.com slash contact. You'll be able to get in touch with someone who can help you out with any questions, help you get that trial running if you're having any issues or anything else you may need. So with that, let me take a look and see if Dahan and Emily have left me any questions to answer because it's entirely possible that they answered everything. All right, let's see. So the 64 and 64W should be available to order now. Um, I can look into, oh, it looks like Don answered that as I was, I was speaking to it, but they should be available now. They were available uh, actually as of last Thursday was the orderability day. You, okay, this is a great question. Is the 64W capable of being in a combined network with the switches and APs because the 60W was not? No, the 64W has the same wireless feature set and operates in the same fashion with the exception of being 802.11ac and simultaneous dual band that the 60W was. So there are reasons for this. Uh, it's actually something that I'm discussing with uh, other members of the product team and with the engineering team. But for the foreseeable future, we don't expect the 64W and the MRs to be able to be in a combined network. We are working on allowing you to put the 64W in a combined network with a switch. Because if there's no wireless overlap, that seems like a reasonable thing to do, right? Uh, we have made some changes to firewalling, more flexible firewalling, but we do not yet permit host names and firewall rules. So we do have URL filtering. The question is, is there any FireAmp or URL filtering capability? We do have URL filtering. Um, it's bright cloud-based URL filtering today. We don't have FireAmp, but we do have a Kaspersky-based uh, edge antivirus engine running on the box. And of course, we're always looking at other Cisco technologies and potential integration points. So there may be movement there in the future. Let me actually expand out this questions tab so I can get some more questions answered. The MX64W does not have a third radio for air marshal. The way that the MX64W and 60W before it handles uh, rogue detection is slightly different than the way that the APs do it. And we do not have a, a third radio um, but we do still have rogue AP detection capabilities. So this is a great question, but it's one that's going to take a lot of time to answer, and I don't want to get too deep into this here. The question is on warm spare failover. So you can configure warm spare in either one arm concentrator or NAT mode on the uh, addressing and VLANs page and dashboard. In terms of how the failover works, I don't want to get too deep into that. I will say that it uses VRRP, but Vaughn, if you have more questions about that, feel free to reach out. Uh, to your Meraki rep or reach out to an SE, and I'm sure we can get through that and kind of go in detail. You can also see a description of how the failover works on docs.meraki.com, D-O-C-S.meraki.com. 
there's a section on security appliances and it has a section on warm spare that describes the failover metrics. If you need more information than that, reach out. We'll be happy to help. Um, so if you look at the sizing guide, it will give you the recommended number of users for each box. If you have over, if you have 100 and, about 170 users, it looks like this particular uh, Timo is asking about, that's an MX100 deployment at that point. The MX80 is really only recommended for up to 100 users. Here's a great question. Is there a trade-up program? If the 60W was purchased last year and you want to use the 64W, well, the short answer is there's no hardware trade-in program, but we will honor the remainder of the license. So if you have a 60W today and you purchase a 64W but don't want to purchase a new license, we will honor the remainder of the 60W license toward the 64, and that's something that uh, we can work with you to, to get figured out. So anyone who's not familiar with our licensing structure, uh, if you go to the products section and look at the MX on the Meraki website and scroll to the bottom, it will describe the differences between the advanced security and enterprise license. It is an either or license. You don't purchase one on top of the other, you choose one or the other license. Let's see here, what else do we have? The 64 will honor uh, QoS in the sense that it respects DSCP tagging. So if you're using DSCP on a 3560X or any other device, the 64 will honor those tags. If you have dual link traffic, this is a great question. This is not specific to the 64. This is a broader MX question. If you have a dual link scenario, so you have two ISPs or two links to one ISP, uh, will the traffic leave one link or will it be split between both? Well, it's up to you. You actually have the ability to configure that. You can set up what we call link aggregation to balance the traffic between them according to the bandwidth available. You set the bandwidth that you have for each link, and then you tell it to automatically aggregate the flows. Or you can actually set what we call uplink preferences, which are sort of like a limited form of PBR, but only for uplinks. And what you can do is say, based on this layer three classification, I want traffic to go out uplink one or uplink two, and it will go out the uplink you specify. But if one of them fails, then everything gets shunted to the uplink that's still working so that we don't interrupt traffic. So the Z1's uh, involvement in IWAN is probably going to be very minimal. It, it's not designed for kind of that, that more advanced routing scenario. So it does have full auto VPN capabilities, um, but we have not yet determined if it will be able to do uh, things like the performance-based routing for auto VPN. So stay tuned for more on that. Great question here. Are we coming out with more devices that support AC for larger numbers of users? So. Before I get into this, I just want to say we don't comment on hardware roadmap, but I will tell you that the 64W and the 60W before it are designed for the small branch use case. If you have more than 50 users, odds are good they're in a space where they can't all be covered by a 64W in one location, right? Even if you sat it in the middle of a site and you had 100 users, odds are good those 100 users aren't going to all be served by the 64W. They're going to be some, at least some are going to be out of range. So when you get into those larger deployments, you're better off going with a 64 non-W and the MR access points because that allows you more flexibility in de your deployment. Uh, there's a much richer wireless feature set on the MRs. And really, I think it's very rare that you would ever want to deploy, say, an MX100 style box with wireless in it because it's not going to cover the majority of your users. Great question, uh, performance question. The MX60 appears to slow down when content filtering and enterprise security features are enabled. Is the new model faster? Absolutely. Uh, take a look at the sizing guide I mentioned if you wanna know the specifics. It gives you very specific information about the impact of each feature or each combination of features on the box and on, on performance and throughput. But it is a significant step up from the MX60 and it handles those security features much better. That's one of the reasons, as I mentioned, right, we want to address the security concern and be able to offer that full security feature set without as much without that that performance hit. And the 64 really does that very well. Um, all existing platforms will support, all the MX platforms will support the IWAN features. So this is not specific to the 64 or the 100 or any of the, the kind of newer platforms. Um, and there's no hardware upgrade required for the IWAN feature set. It's purely a software update. So expect to see that in the coming months and we'll get you more on timeline as we get a little closer to it. OSPF support, this is absolutely something that we have on the roadmap. We are gonna be adding OSPF support. Um, the goal is to add it this year, this calendar year. 
but we don't have a firm ETA at this point. Let me see what kind of time I'm looking at. I've still got some time, so let me answer a few more here. Uh, you can absolutely aggregate. So this is a great question. Can we aggregate bandwidth from two different ISPs today on the MX100? You can aggregate bandwidth from two different ISPs on any MX device, MX60 or 64 on up through the 600. Um, it's part of the existing feature set. The link aggregation feature I mentioned and the uplink preferencing feature are both existing functionality supported by all MX products. Can we extend the wireless range using the 64W with one of the MRs? Specifically, the question is on the MR34, but I'll, I'll answer it for all MRs. So we don't do uh, meshing or kind of 802.11k or R uh, fast roaming between the MX64W and the MRs. You can use them in the same scenario, and I've seen decent performance in roaming, but my recommendation would be if you want to use the MRs, you should go with the 64 non-W and the MR, rather than trying to kind of MacGyver together a solution using the 64W and the MR line. Looking through here, I'm seeing some questions I've already answered. Um, we are investigating any connect support. I know that's a that's a common thing a lot of people ask about. It's something we're looking into. Um, we're talking to the AnyConnect team and we're seeing what we may, may be able to do there. Uh, any plans to enable the SFP ports on the 100 and greater to be WAN ports? Not at this time, but it's something we're definitely thinking about. We don't have any firm plans right now. However, one option there is obviously you can use fiber transceivers, but there's also our switch line and the eight port switch has SFP ports and you could do an SFP to ethernet transition uh, with the MS228 as an example, depending on your scenario, right? Whether that makes sense for you. If we have multiple MX64s at different sites, is there a way to push an update to all of them immediately? So I'm assuming this is a firmware update. Um, I'll answer for both firmware and configuration updates. So when you make a configuration change, you can make one change to multiple sites using the templates, the configuration templates feature, which again, you can find some information on on docs.meraki.com. Um, so it is possible to push a change to a series of MXs or MX networks all at once using templates. There's also a configuration sync feature that allows you to synchronize certain changes across networks or groups of networks. For firmware, you can upgrade your devices on your own. That's actually a relatively new functionality from Rocky. You can do firmware updates on your own, or if you want to schedule a whole group of networks in one fell swoop, you can reach out to support and have them schedule, say, you know, 50 or 100 or 1,000 MX networks for an upgrade. Will all or most of the MX platforms see similar hardware upgrades? Again, we can't comment on hardware roadmap, but I will say that as with any vendor, right? We're always looking at what's the next step? What can we refresh? What's the what's the needs? What are the needs that customers have? So of course, we're going to continue to deliver new hardware. Um, but I wouldn't expect it to be something like, a, oh, we're going to release a, you know, MX everything for or anything like that. It's not it's it's a, on a case by case basis. And we kind of go through and, and we look at what the needs are, and we try to address them. I'm going to take, about, I think about two or three more questions. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap up. I'll let you guys go a little early. Um, let's see here. Ooh, great question. I actually don't know the answer to this, but I'm going to say it and I'm actually going to go look into it. On the dashboard, this particular user, George, supports multiple organizations, so kind of an MSP, managed service kind of model. There's a indicator, there's the MSP uh, view for dashboard that allows you to see some high-level information about the networks. Will there ever be a map view of that? I honestly don't know. That's a great question. Uh, for the UI and uh, MSP teams. And I actually will bring that up with the MSP product manager because I think that's a great idea. And it may be something that he's investigating already. I, I honestly don't know. AC Wave 2. Uh, so as with the MR product line, AC Wave 2 would require uh, new hardware because it's entirely different radio technology. Uh, we don't have any immediate plans for AC Wave 2. Once AC Wave 2 is out there in the world, we will, of course, visit that, and it's it's possible that the next revision down the road of you know whatever the, the next 64 is would have Wave 2, but that's obviously we just released the 64 and 64W, so that would be a ways in the future at this point. 
So the Sizen Guide, uh, we've had a few people who get a cached version of the Sizen Guide. If you viewed it before and you go back to view it, you may still see the old one. Uh, open an incognito window, try a different browser, clear your cache, because the current Sizen Guide is updated. It has the 64 and 64W on it. It's all with the current data. So if you're seeing something, if you get the first page, when you open it up, the very first page has a subheading that has the date. If you do not see February 2015, you're getting a cached version of the page. So try a different browser or clear your cache. All right, I'm going to take one more, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, let's see. Who's got a great question here? To get away from MPLS, what's the best way to set up MXs at my branches to have redundant VPN? This is going to depend on your setup, right? It's going to depend on your uplink scenario, your network, um, but generally, it's it's pretty much natively supported. All you have to do is have two uplinks configured, and we will automatically fail the VPN over to the second uplink of the, or whatever the non-primary uplink is if the primary fails. So really all you have to do is have two uplinks and have VPN turned on. We take care of the rest for you. If you have more questions or, or kind of a, more in-depth questions about that, reach out to your rep. They'll put you in touch with a sales engineer who can answer any questions you may have about this. It's something we, we work with people with all the time. So we've got lots of information available for that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here, but I do want to mention that uh, this session has been recorded. We will send the recording out to you, so you will have this available to you. And by all means, do feel free to reach out to your Cisco Meraki rep with any questions you have here. I apologize that we couldn't get to everything. Um, but any further questions you have, we're, we're happy to help with. And please do reach out, and we'll get those answered for you. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you got some good information out of this. And uh, I hope to see an influx of trials from some of you guys in the near future. Have a good rest of your day.